Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to prepare a Hungarian potato stew with um, scotch egg. In Hungarian that would be krumpli főzelék tojásos fasírta. Um, this intro actually I'm filming the day after I've done the cooking because I wasn't quite happy with the intro. I uh, was talking gibberish so um, yeah that's that. Um, ingredients for the scotch eggs were 500 grams of 20% ground pork. Um, then I've added uh, 50 grams of panko breadcrumbs, which can be substituted with any breadcrumbs, uh, or you can do what we normally do in Hungary and just use some stale bread and um, soak it in milk if you like. Then I've added one whole egg to the mix and some 20 grams of paprika. I've added a tiny pinch of marjoram and one gram of um, caraway seeds and I've added one not quite finely chopped uh, medium onion and 50 grams of parmesan and then I've seasoned everything with um, salt, black pepper and a bit of uh, general seasoning and I've paneed everything in flour and then breadcrumbs and I've deep fried everything in oil um, and then for the potato stew, I've used 35 grams of lard, um, two large potatoes, um, which were rooster potatoes, uh, one medium onion, about half a bulb of garlic, which is quite a lot of garlic. You can always adjust it to yourself, add as much garlic as you like. I like garlic. Um, I've added some thyme. You can see it in the video how much I've added, about one one fourth of a bunch. Um, I've added about half a bunch of parsley and some spring onions and I've added one vegetable cube and I've seasoned everything with salt and pepper as well and I've added one bay leaf and then I've finished the cooking as you can see in the video with some sour cream. What we normally do in Hungary but I think I talk about this in uh, the video as well that we normally would mix the sour cream with flour and thicken the it's not a stew to be honest we don't call this stew in hungary so this dish would be a, a cross between a soup and a casserole um, but i think in english it makes sense to call it a stew because it is a stewing process kind of um, but we have loads of meals like this this would be a nice weekday meal in hungary um, especially in the winter and then I think I talk about this in the video as well but so what I've decided to do is to make um, scotch eggs instead of uh, what would be a traditional uh, tiny meatloaf um, but I like scotch eggs and I like the idea of scotch eggs and one of the things that I really like in English cuisine and but the way I've done the scotch egg is different from the way the English people do the scotch egg as well because they would normally use sausage meat uh, but I was making it into a Hungarian flavor so I've just used pork mince and I've added essential Hungarian flavors and to be honest wow it's just awesome so guys this is the recipe if you want to follow it you can or you can adjust it to your liking and in this video I'm also going to answer some of the questions that you asked me in the community tab I won't be able to answer all of it but I'll try to answer it bit by bit in home cooking videos I think that's the best way because I've, I've, I did actually go through all the questions and I did answer them but it sounds so dry I don't want to bore you with, with all that so anyway this is me from the future back to me from the past I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and see you on the next one guys, thank you! Um, so for the two of us I'm going to use two potatoes and one onion for this stew. Another onion for the scotch egg. Um, these lovely red spring onions are going in the scotch egg as well. And I've got some herbs uh, such as parsley, thyme and chives. Some of them will go in the scotch egg, some of them will go in the stew um, kind of trinity of my hungarian um, seasoning is uh, ground caraway seeds marjoram and paprika 
a tiny Italian touch is that I'm going to add some Parmigiano to this coach egg as well. I'm uh, also going to add some panko and some egg to the scotch egg mix and that's about it and as I cook when I have some free time when I don't have to do much then I'm going to try to answer your questions to drink I've got some beautiful fruits nice treat for the chef Beautiful, look at this. Prost. So I'm gonna start with the eggs. Time is half past six. We just came back from the gym and we are very hungry. Um, I'm going to boil the eggs for six minutes ish. I've already boiled the water in the kettle to save time. And I would like to achieve a nice and runny yolk. Let's top this up. This should do. Yeah, so water is almost boiling. I'm going to put my eggs. Let's go for similar size eggs. So eggs are in, I've got about 6 minutes, so I have to take them out around 43. Then I've got some 20% fat uh, pork mince. I prefer the fattier mince. And this is recyclable or not? Most likely not, I'll find out later. Okay, so pork mince is in, which was half a kilo. To this I'm going to add, let's see, this was almost nothing, so we'll add more. I think, yeah, I'm going to add 100 grams. No, actually that's too much, 50 grams, 10%. So I've added 10% to the weight of the mince. Uh, what we would normally do in Hungary is that we would soak old bread or old buns uh, in milk and add that to the mix. But I don't have that so I just use panko. I'm going to add just one egg to this. Yeah, eggs are boiling already. I can lower the heat. It doesn't have to boil like crazy. And to this, I'm going to add paprika essential in Hungarian cooking. So I'm not sure if you can see the grams. I'm just going to eyeball it as I would. And then you can see how much I've actually added. And that's about it. Um, marjoram, marjoram won't be too much, so I don't think it's gonna show on this scale. That's about it. Only a touch, and then caraway seeds, essential in Hungarian cooking. Not too much either. I would say one gram. That's it. I'm going to add a bit more to the um, potato stew as well from the same. So I've added some of my ingredients. I'm just going to chop one onion quite fine. Um, some people cook it off, some people don't. Uh, this time I'm not going to cook it off. I'm just going to chop it quite fine. And I have to mention uh, John from Chef's Vision who was kind enough to send me this gift. It's a beautiful, um, fantastic knife holder. Um, they sell this on their website. If you want to check it out, I highly recommend it. It's they're not sponsored, but I did um, get this as a gift from them. 
because he enjoys the channel and I was like you know what I could actually use they sell knives mostly but they do sell these um, these knife holders as well so John thank you again for this gift I really appreciate it, it looks awesome it works awesome One thing with these Victorinox knives, um, I've noticed that they don't actually hold the sharpness quite as well as my Japanese knives or my, I don't have any German knives here. It's still awesome knife, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't actually hold the sharpness quite as well as my other knives. Where is my sharpener? Hmm. I've got this sharpener, but this is quite new and very aggressive, so I have to go easy with it. It's a diamond sharpener. That's it. I'm just gonna go through the onion again. Time is... I've got one more minute on the X ish. Okay, so this was one medium onion. I'm going to add this to the raw meat. And the skin is off, that's fine. Then seasoning, salt and pepper. Uh -huh. this Let's go for salt. Should I use block salt? Yeah, why not? Box salt is awesome. So salt and ground pepper. And I use a tiny bit of general seasoning. Not much though. Just a wee bit. That's it, that does the job. Yeah, so this is our mix. I'm just going to mix all this together. Um, and our eggs are done. So, get rid of this. So this was actually seven minutes. You see how the eggs will turn out. Straight away, just pour the water to cool down now. And I should add a tiny bit of parsley to this as well. Okay, that's done. And of course, don't forget about the parsley. No parsley. And of course, don't forget about the parmigiano. Let me see if I can do a seal and peel test. And works beautifully. And let's see how much.
two this makes 40 40 grams 40 by 40 let's make it 50 that's it 50 grams of parmesan which is absolutely not traditional in Hungarian cooking okay so I'm just gonna mix all this up mm. yeah And if you're thinking about changing the meat from pork to something else, then I guess you could. You can always change this to chicken or turkey or even beef if you like. I've actually never tried it with beef, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, but for me, for this dish it has to be pork. Okay, I'm happy with this. Just wash my hands quick. All right. Now, moving on to this stew. I'm going to use this lovely dish. And Turn on, high heat, I'm going to add some lard. Not much, this is about, I'll let you know. Thirty-five grams, that's enough. Just to fry up the onions. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's done. So, onions. Oh, I forgot about this. You know what? Actually, I'm not gonna put them in the mix. I'm gonna use this as garnish. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a better idea. Again, just finely chop the onions for the base. is failing. What's going on here? Okay, that's fine enough for me. When you go in. Can lower the heat a bit. Yeah, the are starting to burn already. Still have to um, learn how to use the induction process. Still not used to it. But don't panic, I'm just going to add a bit of water just to stop the onions from burning. Completely fine. The water is going to go away. And then I can fry the onions more perfectly all right next step is that i'm going to chop the potatoes into cubes again try to maintain a um, uniform size so the potatoes will cook in the same time I 
I'm aiming for about four portions. See how many onions are doing. Okay, onions look good. I'm going to add some garlic to this as well. garlic and with the potatoes next let's take the chopping board it's easier okay and with the potatoes And add water to cook just enough to almost cover the potatoes how are we doing time wise come on 44 so we are about 10 minutes in and I'm going to add bay leaf Don't go crazy with bay leaf, for this amount one is just enough. And thyme, which is also not traditional, at least not in my house. My mom would never have time to it, but I love thyme. So I'm going to add some thyme. And parsley, of course. It's not very finely chopped, but it's good enough for me. So it goes in. And actually, since I haven't used this in the meat mix, I'm just going to add a bit of spring onion to this as well. Nino Nike. Much different, much better, much better. So this is what you do if you don't want your chopping boards to move around. Just put four wet paper towels in each corner, and that will help to stop the chopping board moving around. All right. At this point, I'm going to add one vegetable stock to the potatoes if I can open it that's it and this bit is done I'll give it a little stir and I can reduce the heat slightly I have to go in like crazy. So at this point, I'm not going to add. Oh, actually, I can add some black pepper. There was tiny amount here, but I have some more of the salt and black pepper mix. So I'll do that. And the induction has turned off. 
ten balkon. Yeah, I want seven. That should be fine. And I have a lid for this dish. So lid goes on. I think I'm gonna cook this for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to prepare the scotch eggs. So we have our four soft boiled eggs, which hopefully will open quite easily. Let's see. Let's see if they're gonna peel. Oh yes, they will peel. Uh, it feels a bit more firm than what I was aiming for. But at least I can peel them easily. Oh no, it's nice and soft. Mm -hmm -hmm. When it's done. And so there we go. And I'm not gonna turn everything into scotch eyes. I'm still going to make some of the traditional looking... Um, what should I call them? Meatloaves. Uh -huh, this one is a bit more tricky, seem like. Oi, 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 oi. Come on, buddy. No, don't break. That's the problem with um, soft boiled eggs. But once you got the membrane, it's quite easy to peel. It's all about the membrane. Well, okay, don't worry. I can fix this. God, it's very delicate. It's okay. Let's see if I'm going to be more lucky with the rest. So I've got two very nice ones and two slightly broken ones, but that's fine. So next step is to make scotch eggs. Uh, to make scotch eggs is actually quite easy. Just need space. I can use this plate again. I might use this garlic. Let's see what else. Okay. chopping board and what I'm gonna do I'm going to measure around 100 grams 120 perfect so I'll measure 120 grams per scotch egg do four scotch eggs and then the rest is going to be just like um, traditional toppings yeah I definitely I love scotch eggs I'm planning to do a um, nibbles video like what goes well with beer and definitely scotch eggs are one of my favorite 
Okay, and then the rest, let's see, I'll just go, how much more do I have? Four hundred, four hundred grams ish. So we started with half a kilo of meat. Let's see, I go with hundred grams ish. Close enough. Okay, so that's my meatballs done. And my scotch egg. No, I didn't wash mine properly because I'm still working with me. Um, so at this point, I have my four uh, the traditional ones and the four scotch eggs, just to clarify 120. 120, 120, and yeah. So these are my scotch eggs. What I'm gonna do is, so I roll them out. I'm going to flatten them, which I normally do with a knife because then it's going to be equally flat. So let's use a knife for that. Yeah, and then you grab your egg, and basically you just wrap, what? wrap the meat around it, and try to wrap it so that it's equally thick everywhere, without any any bits like this where it's broken. So I just follow the shape of the egg and just work the meat. Okay, so that's one done. Next one. more challenging because the egg is um, a bit broken already but once you finish this scotch egg you won't be actually able to see and see I just work everything together Closing the meat up. It's crazy when I used to work in um, in a pub in my previous job. We used to sell scotch eggs for three pound fifty, and that was quite an expensive pub in uh, Richmond upon Thames, uh, called uh, Shaftesbury. Uh, you can still look it up, you can probably still see a few pictures of even me but that was back in um, between 2012 and 2016 when I used to work there I loved it, um, we used to do steaks, cut to order I used to have a nice um, char grill oven and I just love that thing, it's like a Jospar if you're familiar with it 
there was such a adrenaline bomb in the job, especially when we had um, rugby in uh, Twickenham, and then we used to do about 120 covers in literally two hours, full menu a la carte, cut steaks to order, that was crazy, that was crazy. Okay, so my four scotch eggs are done. So the next step is going to be to tidy up slightly and then finish these scotch eggs and these nice little fushies. Now the difference is going to be that these I'm just going to cover in breadcrumbs by these scotch eggs. The scotch eggs I'm going to pan it. Okay, so that's my four and four. That's it. Lovely job. Okay, quick tidy up and then I'll be back. Okay guys, I just tied it up quick. Let's see what this tastes like. Mmm, oh it's perfect. Wow. Potatoes are nicely cooked already. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Almost ready to be finished. Uh, next step is to finish the scotch eggs and the fashiet or meatloaf if you like. For that I've got some oil already. So let's get some flour, some panko and eggs. Seasoning as well. Now at this point, because my potato is almost cooked, I'm going to move it on the gas on a tiny, tiny heat, and I'm going to move my oil. To the front so I have more space. Yeah, that's off. And this can be turned on for now. A higher uh, setting. Exactly. 
so scotch eggs, flour, just basic bunny, flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs. One done. Yeah, this I can feel is breaking up a bit. Maybe on this one I use a double double coating just to be on the same side. So I'll put it back to the eggs. So this is gonna have a thicker um bunny than the other one. This one is nice and firm. And I'm using the wrong hand. Okay, egg 3 is done, and egg 4, again this is breaking up quite a bit, so I have to do a double coating, so I'll go back. You know what, I might as well just go for double coating since I have the X. So all these coach eggs are now double coated. Perfecto. Okay, so at this point I don't need the flour or the remaining X. And the induction is doing its thing. I'm going to lower the heat slightly and I'll check the temperature of the oil. I highly recommend everyone to get a pro. This can be very handy. So I'm aiming at 160-ish, is already there, which is around... How do I switch to Fahrenheit? Three hundred and fifty Fahrenheit or hundred and eighty ish Celsius. So these cochecks can go in. Need some more panko, and this should be ready in about six minutes. This should be. And these I'm just going to um, dip in panko. This will fry much faster as well. Okay, that's done. And now I have some time to answer your questions. After I tidy up. Now to finish the potatoes, I'm going to use sour cream. And the traditional method would be to mix the sour cream with some flour so that it thickens up, but I might not do that. I'm going to remove the bay leaf. Yeah, this is breaking up already. It's done. All I'm gonna do is just to mix up the sour cream with a tiny bit of paprika. I'm 
going to add a tiny bit of margarine to this as well. And mix this up. And then literally just pull it over. And then I'm not actually going to thicken it anymore because once you crush the potatoes, that's gonna thicken the whole thing. Or we have seen a mite add a tiny bit of more um, starch to thicken it up, but this is thick enough for it. Beautiful. Salt, definitely, yeah, but not much, just a bit of salt. That's it, perfect. I'm really happy with that. And I'll just leave it on a very low heat. Wow, amazing. Mm. Wow. Oh yes. Amazing potatoes. And just turn these around. Monitor the temperature. Fine. All right, so Q&A. Now I've had loads of questions about... Um, I had loads of questions in total. I had a 98 question, which is a lot. Um, there are few questions that are exactly the same or very similar. So don't feel bad if I don't answer your questions. But let's go from the top. So how did you learn to cook? And where do you get the ideas from? Um, well, I've learned to cook in Hungary, the basics. And then I've learned a lot in the UK, working with all different kind of people, different backgrounds, different cuisines. Uh, and I get a lot of my ideas from street food videos. Um, next question is, what is your go-to meal? To cook when you are feeling lazy, it has to be steak and chips. Steak, fries and peppercorn sauce. Easy. And it's rum steak, my choice normally. Next question was, I enjoyed watching you make and create the famous Canadian poutine. Oh yeah, that was a bit of a car crash on YouTube. I uh, had a lot of uh, negative comments because I didn't use uh, french fries and I didn't use um, cheese curds. But you know me, I grab something, I turn it into my dish, is in the basics is still the same dish, is potatoes and gravy and cheese. And if I upset someone, you know, I'm sorry, but I do like to um, play around. Um, why is this doing it? Next question is... Yeah, that's another question. What is your favorite meal? I don't have any favorite meals. I have a lot of favorite meals. Yeah, definitely. I can't just pick one. And did my favorite meal change? Again, I don't have a favorite meal. My favorite meal would be something that my mom cooks for the obvious reason. Um, yeah, it, it didn't change. I did pick up a lot 
to be honest, in the UK. Um, but I don't really have a favorite meal. Uh, who thought you cook? Uh, many chefs I used to work with and I was quite lucky to work with a lot of good chefs in the past. Um, what was your first reaction of British food? Oh my god, I was in shock. Um, I remember when the first time I've seen um, pies, you know, pastry, stew, in my head it just didn't um, work together, but obviously I was ignorant and it works beautifully and I love it now. Um, and to be honest, I really hate when people bash British food because all they can think of is um, fish and chips and uh, chips and beans and all that. But if you see what um, talented chefs create, you shouldn't really bash uh, British food. Um, next question is... Um, what was the biggest adjustment work-wise from coming... Um, coming from Hungary to England is definitely the mindset of people. That's one of the biggest, biggest um, change for me. People were a lot more... Um, Hmm, how to say, people were very depressed in Hungary and everybody thinks in like a, not everybody, but a lot of people think in a very depressing way and it just brings me down. Uh, I've turned it off, that's fine. Oi. Um, what else? What do I consider to be the most important skills for line cooks? Um, I'm not sure if these are skills, these are more like, if you learn something, it's not a skill, I don't think. Uh, it helps if you have good skills, but you can definitely learn skills. And if you have a good teacher, then you can definitely learn a lot. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone is born with skills, or maybe yes, but um practicing is more important than than anything um where was i if you ever opened a restaurant what would it be um what would it called it would be called gourmet and i would sell proper gourmet food for cheap so everyone can enjoy it with nothing of the um, you know not not trying to be too fancy because people get scared of it um, next question would be something that something tasty that people are intimidated um, it's difficult. A lot of people are intimidated by things because they've never tried them and they're actually quite easy to cook. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just trying to see the temperature of the scotch eggs and I'm aiming for 73 to 75 degrees Celsius for the meat to be cooked. Obviously, the temperature is still going up and at this point you don't want to overcook the eggs. So you just worry about the outer layer to be cooked and it seems to be done. I'm just going to let it uh, rest for now. And actually I need another beer. Let's go for... I love German beers and Austrian beers. Spezial Brauhaus Tegernesse. Tegernesse? I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry. This is nice beer. Let's just finish the fruit. And to be honest, I've started to do a um, Q and A video. I've, I've recorded it yesterday, and it took me about an hour to to answer all the questions, and it just sounded so boring. So that's why I thought, hey, let's do some home cooking and then I can answer some of the questions and then I can carry on in another video so it's not too dry. Um, 
What was the biggest adjustment for you, food-wise, cooking-wise, work-wise, coming from Hungary, moving to England, is mentality. Um, we in Hungary, at the time I used to work in Hungary, in catering, we had to work like animals and like machines. We used to do six days a week, at least uh, 14 hours a day, easy. Um, in the summertime, where I'm from, I'm from Balatonfüred, is a very touristic place. We used to work um, at least four months, no day off. You work every day and you work really hard. And then you have to cheat the system as well to make a living. Um, basically, your employee tells you that you're going to earn a certain amount of money and then he's going to tell to the government to, that you are earning less, so he has to pay less some um, tax and order. Um, I'm not sure if this is the case 20 years later, but that was the biggest adjustment. Um, what else can I answer in this video? Um, can you give a brief recap on how you got to where you are? Okay, um, so back in 2005 I used to work in an Italian restaurant in Hungary, in my hometown. And one of my colleagues, the sister, came to the UK and the guy told her, look, if there is any jobs, give me a call and I'll be there. So he left in about a week. And I've told him before he left, um, all right, mate, um, you know, if there is any jobs, let me know. So one week later, he called me and I had to make a decision. That was the decision of my life. And that was to leave Hungary and come to work in the UK. And one week later, I was already working in the UK, and I haven't stopped since. I've been working through 18 years. I've never been unemployed or anything like that. I always find work even in the hardest times. Um, you have a GoPro and would like to do vlogs? You will definitely go for it. It's very entertaining, and I recommend it to everyone. Um, let's see, there was a lot of questions about how I met Mrs. T and to be honest I met her online uh, with an online dating app because I never had time to go out for dating. And one of the most popular questions was um, why did I start to do YouTube and it's quite simple, I've seen a chap called um, Steven Patula who does uh, McDonald's POVs and I found his style and his editing really nice and uh, engaging and I thought to myself that I could do similar to this obviously in a different setup and if it works for him why wouldn't it work for me and I've basically gone from there and as most of you know I've started to upload about a year ago and here we are and I love it and pretty much if it's not for these guys and one of my colleagues who is dead is a very famous uh, Ethiopian singer and I'll, link, I'll leave the link in the description for him and his own channel and if you guys can check it out I would really appreciate that um, and he told me that this can be a um, another income you know and Thanks to that, I could refurbish my kitchen, which I would have never been able to. Anyway, guys, uh, that's for the questions for now. I will answer more in another video before it gets too boring. Uh, so my scotch eggs are cooked. Um, again, just to double check, I'm aiming at the meat. You know where the meat is. And you want it to be at least like 73, 75 degrees Celsius. So it looks to be done, and then these bad boys are at 83, that's done. Yeah, definitely done. Okay, so these are cooked as well. So job done, and now I just need to plate up and eat, which is nice because I'm very hungry. I can turn off the oil 
find two nice plates if I can. Yeah, this will do. Okay. So for garnish, I'm just going to slice some of the spring onions. Which I should have peeled, looks like. But it's not too late, don't worry. No need to panic. Okay. Alright. Yeah, this will do. This can go to the bin. Let's see the potato stew. Is uh -huh, that was a stupid idea. So potato stew is beautiful. Yeah, it doesn't need any thickening at all. Okay, lovely. Let's see the scotch eggs. How are we doing? I'm aiming for a nice and not fully cooked yolk, which I have. Looks beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. And let's see another one. This is slightly more cooked, but it's fine. And then a little garnish. Chives for garnish as well. Mm -mm -mm. And then um, just an extra dollop of sour cream. Because we love sour cream in Hungary. Let's find some space. Okay, so obviously these are just little Meatloaves, but you can see the color from the paprika. Mm, amazing, wow! And um, so, this would be normally served with these little um, how do you call them? Fashit in Hungarian, again, little meatloaves, but today I've done it with the scotch egg. You can see that the meat is beautifully cooked. The egg is not runny. I did overcook it slightly, but it's still nice. And there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some answers. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.